Hello and welcome to the Greg Theron podcast with your host Greg Theron and back again I have the awesome chef Joe Polly Keys. How are you? Hello. Welcome back. How are you doing? Yeah, thank you for having thank you for inviting me back. It's good to good always good to chat to you, Greg. Yeah, well, hey, that's why I have you back because you're good to chat to too. So yeah, this is awesome. So what's been happening? Um, it's been a while since you came on. Well, it has. It has been a while. Um, and yeah, I think I think like a lot of people, I've been in some kind of weird COVID shell. Um, you know, lockdown bought very different things for different people. But for me, the beginning was absolutely fine and kind of transitioned the business online a bit and did some online cook-alongs and stuff. But the second one kind of just, you know, sucked the life out of me, I think, is probably the best it's way really, of putting it's it. It's really weird. I'm, I'm hearing this a lot. A lot of people are saying, yeah, the first one was all right. The second one just yeah. not me for six. Yeah, it really did. I just think that a lot of people just got so fatigued with the, you know, the Zoom thing and, and, and being stuck in the house with the same people all the time. And, you know, and you lose that social interaction and knowing how to do that. And then people kind of became almost afraid of doing that a little bit. Um, so, yeah. So when we started to come out of, you know, and being able to do things, yeah, I think it took people a long time. And I still don't think we're quite there yet. I think September when the kids go back to school, you know and then you know we've been on holiday and um but yeah so so i think yeah it's been it's been a strange one certainly business wise and and personally wise and and i think all the changes in routines have affected us all in in numerous different ways you know having to for me training became at home um you know i was down the crossfit gym but i've stopped doing that now and we've you know we're building a gym at home but it's all in the living room now and we're training at home which is great you know not having to to get up too early and go out but you know has its benefits um but it's just that learning a new thing um and still the uncertainty of of what's going to happen next you know yeah are we going to do we personally you know everyone's going to be different do we personally want to go back to exactly what we were doing before or have we found something that's working better for us and it's just picking and choosing the things that um that are working for us and and the things that we're missing and and actually stepping out there and not being too scared to to go back out there and, and go back and do some of the things that you were doing before and try and see if if you know see if that working for you, you know, and, and then from a nutrition perspective, you know, your eating habits, because your routine is all out of whack, then your eating routine goes all out of whack as well. So I think it's, um, yes, it's been a very strange couple of years. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think we'll ever kind of, we'll, we'll sit back in about five years and go, what on earth was that? Like, yeah, yeah, I, I think, yeah, we'll, we'll always be, yeah, in shock, really, I think still. <laughs> That blur of that time. Yeah, children, it didn't happen. It's, yeah. it's a myth. That, just ignore it because we can't yeah. kind of talk about it anymore. The trauma of it. So yeah. you can't, we kind of reached out to me and said, Greg, need some help. Got some questions. What was going on for you? Yeah, so, you know, I think this is all kind of tied up in the whole COVID thing as well, really. Um, and um, so, I, yeah, I had, I'm a, a natural chef and healthy eating educator. So, so very much feel that I know what I should be eating um, and as I say I've been training for years um, regularly do sort of a mix of CrossFit and uh, Pilates you know and the CrossFit is is, is part, partly sort of strength training mm -hmm. um, you know using the weights and you know the metabolic conditioning so it's a nice balance of a bit of cardio and strength and and the Pilates as well so I you know I feel I've got a good balance there and I've continued to do that although in a different place yeah. all the way through lockdown continued to do that um, but I was starting to feel a little bit uncomfortable in my skin if I'm honest you know um, starting to feel a little bit soft in areas I didn't like to feel soft in and um particularly around the middle obviously and the 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 look in the mirror and the clothes weren't kind of feeling as you know as nice as I wanted them yeah. to you know and um and and I say I, I knew that um obviously the other thing was that uh, there was a bikini uh, holiday on the horizon as well so that obviously plays into that little you know yeah. looking in the mirror as you're getting dressed um and um and so you know I had to be honest with myself, I, I needed to make some form of change. Um, and as I say, as a natural chef, I um, very eat very healthily, 
However, something wasn't quite working um, as it had been. Um, and I think we just have to be honest with ourselves and, and learn to, to, to listen to our bodies, uh, but, but be careful of the self-talk. I did, I've become aware of this kind of negative self-talk mm. started. Um, mm. And, I, and I, I was trying very desperately to keep that in check um, and just be honest about what I wanted to achieve and that what I was doing at the moment wasn't working. So I reached out to you, Greg, because I knew that you would be able to, to sort of steer me in the right direction. I knew that the tweaking was probably going to be, because I'm not a big fan of calorie counting. Um, you can read my blog and find out why, but <laughs> we can talk about that later. Yeah, no, that's, that's going to be a good discussion. Um, yeah. Um, but I knew that I needed to track um, more my macros because I, I had a niggly feeling that, um, you know, I've, I've always been fairly traditionally low carb. Um, and because of that, probably my fat content, um, uh, fat intake was, was too high of a percentage. Um, and probably with all the training, I wasn't getting enough protein. So I knew it probably wasn't right, but without tracking it, I had no idea. So I started tracking it and then came to you, Greg, and said, you know, this is how it is. This is what I'm trying to achieve. What, you know, this is the bit about sort of sports nutrition and stuff that I'm not, that's, that's not my specialist area. Um, and I know it is yours. So yeah, just wanted to talk it through with you, Greg. And, um, and as ever, you told me what I needed to hear, which was that I needed to up my protein, lower my fats, um, and increase my carbs, um, which I did. And I, I started doing that. Um, and at the same time, obviously, you start to track your calories just by default, really. Yeah. Um, which I always find an eye opener and it hasn't changed my mind about the way I feel about calories. <laughs> <laughs> at all. Um, but I was aiming for around, you know, a weekly average of mm -hmm. sort of 1400 calories a day. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, and, and, and that wasn't, you know, I never found that difficult really. Um, it was getting those percentages in the right balance, yeah. which obviously in turn has an effect on the calories because if I'm eating 60% fat and and then I drop that to 30% fat, obviously my calories are gonna gonna decrease. Yeah. Um, but that was the thing I found most difficult because my go-to for protein, particularly, would would obviously be oily fish, eggs, nuts, seeds, and I knew I had an addiction to nut butter. Um Don't we all? <laughs> yeah. start. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm in total rehab now I, I haven't had um you know I was going from kind of at least a jar a week to you know one portion a week um and that you know that was just a habit you know and it's those things that you you just have to be honest with yourself and yes I know it's healthy but not the amount I'm eating <laughs> and when you do actually just go back and track stuff. Cause you know, let's be honest, we all track stuff in our life. We track our bank account. We track what's going on in our business or, you know, so we track things all the time, but when we re get back and track our nutrition, it's a real big eye opener. So what it was, is. yeah. So apart from the fats, what else was, was, did you kind of see and go, Ooh, well, the the carbs, bringing up the carbs. So as I say, traditionally low carb, mm. when I say that, I mean, I, I was never one to, to eat, rice or potatoes um mm -hmm. and stuff like that i would always get my carbs from from vegetables and it's quite difficult to get enough carbs from vegetables yeah. um so uh i was so i started to up my oats i, I don't mind eating oats mm -hmm. um so i was upping the oats sort of the quinoa the lentils um sweet potato you know those kind of portions yeah. it was just kind of tweaking what my plate looked like and i was still having all the salad and all the vegetables which i would normally have um and just trying to to increase the the portion size of those um you know especially uh, sort of earlier on in the day um because otherwise I felt it, it left me quite heavy at, at night time and, and tell me a bit uncomfortable, especially if it was too many lentils and things like that. Yeah. Um, so it's again, listening to your body and, and working out whether your body is working well as well, you know, mm. because 
you know, if, if you're eating things that are making you feel uncomfortable, because not everyone can can tolerate beans and lentils and lots of stuff yeah. like that, um, you know, because it ends up being too much fiber and we end up constipated and bloated. And so it's just listening to your body. So I had to take it quite steady. Mm. Um, I think the other biggest change was that I was traditionally eating kind of a 16, eight eating um, plan. So right, okay. fasting for 16 hours and eating for eight. Mm -hmm. um, but I always trained ridiculously early in the morning. So I would, mm -hmm. I always train fasted anyway, because otherwise I'm sick. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and, <laughs> which was, which is fine. But yeah. then I would then not necessarily eat until sort of 11 o'clock at, at you know 10 11 o'clock in the morning so I was I wasn't really refueling my body afterwards either mm. and I think that kind of was um stalling my metabolism I would say um and so on your recommendation I introduced the proteins and carbs straight after um training. straight after training or within an hour of training so I was introducing the the protein shakes a bit more to help me up that protein yep. um so having a protein shake with some oats blended in nice. within an hour of finishing training i think made a big difference as well so did that did you feel like you had more energy yeah so as particularly with the the, the cardio um sessions mm. um i just felt a little bit more fired up um Ooh. a little bit more energy um, so I just think the glycogen stores, the muscles were, were being replenished at the right time and the protein was was recovering the muscles and, and um, repairing them afterwards better so that then almost certainly the strength training was probably getting better as well. But that's more difficult to, to see, um, yeah. you know, over a short period of time. But within... I have to say within um, about four weeks, mm. I was seeing, I, I'd already seen results, mm -hmm. um, you know, and that's always quite motivating. Yeah. Oh, we love seeing results, don't we? It's like, yeah, ooh. just, 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 yeah, just feeling a bit better in my clothes and the, you know, the bikini look in the mirror was looking more pleasing. Uh, um, and we, <laughs> you know, we all like that, don't we? Let's face it. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and I always knew that I was eating healthily. So it was never about the health, this bit. This was the aesthetic mm -hmm. side of it for me. Um, and, you know, however much we, we say, a lot of people say, oh, it's not about what I look like. Um, it's about the health. It is. And once you've got the health ticked, great. Um, then we're into the fine tuning, I think, is, is kind of where, where I was at at that, mm -hmm. at that particular point. Um, and yeah that are those small tweaks made a big difference i hate tracking i now am not tracking at the moment um so but after as i say i found it quite difficult for the first four weeks just to get the tweaking right and changing you know the the proportions of of the plate um yeah. and finding the 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 proteins without too much fat um mm -hmm. as i say because it would have been oily fish and nuts and seeds and things like that which which are, are you know protein but they're not bring they're bringing in a lot of fat as well mm. um so going you know more down the chicken white fish route for the protein mm -hmm. um and protein shakes um so i was working on a, a basis of a uh, 30 percent fat 30 mm. percent protein and 40 percent carbs nice Is that right Yep, that sounds yeah, that adds um, 200. Yeah. Bigger, I, I tried to go down to 25% fat and 45 carbs, but I that that was just a much. that wasn't settling very well. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's where I'm at now. Um, or was until I went on holiday, <laughs> you of course, know. Of course. but we're getting back to it now, yeah, yeah, getting back to normal now. But it starts to get more intuitive over time. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit like um, driving a car, I guess, you, you have your lessons and. You've got the instructor telling you to do every little thing. And then after a while, it becomes like, oh, I know what my portions look like. I know what my meals need to look like. Yeah. I mean, portion size was never really a problem for me because I, I don't eat a huge amount. I love eating. I love my food. But I've never been one to eat massive portions of anything. Mm -hmm. um, but it just was the 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 breakup of the plate and, and where, you know, where those... The, the portion sizes of the fat were were too high for, yeah. for what I was trying to achieve at that time. But I know, you know, the other factor I think, Greg, probably is 
um, you know, the lockdown and definitely been a lot more sedentary over the last 12 months than I would normally have been. Definitely. And also I, I, my hormones are, are starting to change. I'm getting to that age that I can't deny, um, you know, the hormones are going to start changing and I have to change with them. Um, mm-hmm. and uh, sorry, yeah, go on, Karen, carry on. Yeah, I would say, and, and also being honest about what you're prepared to change. I mean, I think I said to you on the phone, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to be, let's be realistic, I'm not going to be giving up my Prosecco at the weekend. Um <laughs> <laughs> not for any great length of time anyway yeah um, and so it was just building that in and, and being honest that that that's that's what my weekend I like to do that at the weekend hmm. that's one of my ways to relax I work hard I train hard um during the week and it's just factoring that in and and doing the tracking almost gave me the freedom to do that mm-hmm. and to know to know what the consequences of doing that and having you know half a bottle of prosecco um on a friday and a saturday night has on on the calorie count so it's really interesting that sometimes i think people really when they look at tracking their food they're like oh it's really restrictive but like you said it gives you information and freedom yeah i i think so um and and that is that is the only benefit i see from Mm -hmm. from tracking really you know i I, in terms of sort of going back to that calorie counting thing is that it's it's things like that that you just have to be honest you know because i think people people forget that alcohol contains quite a lot of galleries <laughs> oh yeah two wines it's not food three. it doesn't count it's on a saturday it doesn't count <laughs> sadly it does yeah um and and it is just that honesty with yourself about that really um and and you can't go to your trainer and say it's not working it's not working yeah but that's what you did at the weekend in fact I do remember my first personal trainer in fact my one and only personal trainer you know he used to say to me you work so hard but then you just mess it all up at the weekend don't you well there there is this mentality and I don't know if it's a, a British mentality where we just go YOLO at the weekend yeah it's like right I've down tools I don't have to work Friday, the wine's out at four o'clock in the afternoon or whatever it is. And it's like, doesn't matter. I'll start again on Monday. Yeah. Uh, and and that's fine if that's what you want to do. But if it's not helping you achieve what you want to achieve, then don't come crying to your personal trainer. <laughs> don't, don't, do, don't do your stats and go, oh, it's not working because... No, and, and don't beat yourself up about it. You've, you've got to accept that those are the choices that you make. At the end of the day, they are all just choices. Mm. Um, and how much do you want to achieve that goal yeah. um, is, is really the key. And, and being honest with yourself about that and, and what you're prepared to change and give up. Um, and being honest about, you know, if drinking is the, you know, the thing at the weekend, what else does that lead to so i know for myself if i have too much of that that will lead to the oh well it doesn't really matter i'll have that packet of crisps and that and that and that you know it's it's the snow you know, and if you're doing that every weekend that that's that's not an occasional treat at the weekend that is every weekend that is just hmm. habit and, and and i think you said that you hit the nail on the head it's about being honest about what you're doing hmm. And that's probably the bit that people find the hardest, isn't it? Very much so. Yeah, because we all like to, yeah, you you kind of just delete it, don't you? You delete the things. It's like looking at your life through rose tinted glasses, Mm -hmm. um, which is all very well. um, And and there's nothing wrong with doing any of these, making any of these choices. If you don't want to achieve your goal or if you want it to take longer to achieve your goal. but you have got to also be honest about what is sustainable for you. You know, if you decide you want to achieve your goal quicker and you're going to cut out all the alcohol and all the treats and everything like that, that's fine. But it's not sustainable, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. You have got to find something that works for you on a long term basis um, so that once you, you know, you achieve your goal, you, I don't think you ever really achieve your goal. You can get to a point. Mm-hmm. But if you, you've got to have a, a continued plan, you've got to have a continued 
um, healthy norm, as it were, yeah. um, to be able to maintain that. Otherwise, you end up on this yo-yo, which is what we want to move away from. It is about moving towards a healthy normal, your new healthy normal. Hmm. Well, it's like you know, people say this, yeah. it's not a diet, it's a lifestyle. Well, funny, because diet actually comes from the word lifestyle and habit. But anyway, that's a whole other discussion. But yeah, people get to the goal and go, I've made it now. Yeah. That's it. And, and then what? And and then what? They go back to what they were doing before. Mm -hmm. I've I've made it so I can just carry it, go back to what I what I wanted, what I was doing before, drinking and eating whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted. It, it if you do that, you you're back to square one and worse mm -hmm. quicker. You know, I see that all the time with with clients. Um, you know, they want to achieve weight loss particularly, um, and 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 they will achieve it but then they don't have a plan for afterwards. Mm. They're not, it's about changing your habits for life. Yeah. Um, and, and because of that, if you are looking at it from that perspective, you've got to make the choices that are sustainable. Otherwise it is just a, a, a crash diet and not a lifestyle diet. Oh, I love that. I love that. And that's a really big thing. I think people go all in. It's like, Nothing else in the world matters now. I'm just going to literally hone in on this. going to be the only thing. And they kind of mm. forget they've actually got a, another part of their lives around it. And that's... Yeah. Why do you think that happens? Because they get fixated on something. Um, you, you know, be it the bikini for the holiday, be it the wedding, be it the event that you've got to go to with people that you used to go to school with or, or whatever it might be. Um there is a certain motivation towards a, a goal or a time scale. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, but they, they don't think about how the long-term effects of, of that. And they, they want to, they just want to get to that goal as quick as they can. And they will restrict themselves so much and, and they'll achieve. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll they'll go on these eating plans, you know, I think you did a post on this not recently, didn't you? Yeah. Think, you know, you, you go because because it's difficult for them to work out for themselves what they're doing mm -hmm. or what works for them. And I understand that, which is why you have professionals like you and me to, to help people make those decisions and plans mm -hmm. with them that work for them, that are personalized, because a plan that you buy off uh facebook or internet or, or whatever however um however qualified those people are unless it's personalized to you and takes into account of everything else you've got going on in your life mm -hmm. yeah you just follow it for those 12 weeks and then you don't know what to do afterwards because somebody's telling you what to do mm -hmm. you have to work out what is right for you because your body works different to everybody else's yeah and your goal is going to be different to everybody else's and the amount of exercise you do the amount of sleep you get the amount of stress you're under the amount of children you've got the amount of downtime you get, it's different for everybody and nobody else can work it out for you I, i'm sorry to say that because i know people don't want to hear that um you can get help but you have got to be invested in it yourself for yourself for life I'm that's my view anyway watching this on youtube this is i'm just giving my giving jokes up more. <laughs> high five hallelujah praise the lord it, it, it is i mean we are really weird but so for, for me diy i don't do it like maybe i'm not a manly man i don't know but anyway but i'll pay someone to do it because it's just not my i can paint but yeah. i'm not gonna do the plumbing or do plastering because i know that's not my skill set yeah. Is it because there's so much information out there about nutrition, health and all that stuff that people think I can kind of cobble it together and try and do it myself? I think there's I, I think people get confused and I think they get um, sort of information overload um, mm -hmm. and. Different people will tell you different things, mm -hmm. which is why I'm saying that you, you can't go to, you know, pick up bits off the you know off the off the off the social socials and and you know 
some people will tell you to do keto some people will tell you to go paleo some people will tell you to to do 15 to fast for this time you know and and this is the take this quiz and it'll tell you exactly what's going to work for you and it'll get rid of all your belly fat in two weeks oh yeah i hate those things oh carry on carry on carry on yeah. right. I love <laughs> just, it. <laughs> it, it you know even i get hooked in sometimes and i think i I know that that's not it's not going to work on a long term basis mm -hmm. unless I work it out for myself. But I still get hooked in and go, what are they going to tell these people? You know, I, even I'm intrigued to know what is it? What is the secret that you're going to tell everyone? Uh, there's nothing we haven't already heard before from, you know, but it's it's just trying to you have to listen to your body, be honest with yourself about what you want to achieve and what you're prepared to do to achieve that and how long you want your achievement to last Love it. if you only want your ach achievement to last your goal to last your two-week holiday to look good in a bikini crack on you know mm -hmm. uh, you know there there are those those two-week crash diets or you know that, that will bring you down to whatever it is you want to get to but unless you're prepared to carry on with something afterwards it it will all go back on and more if it's you know from a weight perspective um you just made a very good point sorry go on i've got carry on. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna jump in with a point it's just about the psychology of all the information we see out there because i'm not gonna lie i'll see something on training i'll be like oh oh actually it's it's actually just a reproduction of what we already know yeah it's how the psychology and it's all sexed up it's all it like people yeah. write this stuff so amazingly well that even us as professionals are like ooh, what's that they just yeah. do it so well and and you're you're good at it yourself though greg um but the, the stuff that you say at the end is sensible <laughs> do you know what i mean so i think it was um it might have been yesterday you know this one thing oh yeah <laughs> this one thing will um increase your your training yeah. results by 150 yeah. percent just this one thing and i'm like oh, what's he gonna say <laughs> oh yeah of course make a plan <laughs> make a plan gotcha <laughs> which is yeah but that but that's that's but that's it is that you know that's how people get hooked in which is great it's great marketing mm -hmm. um but what you say at the end is something sensible. Uh, quite a lot of the time, you know, you, you'll you'll get these get hooked in, and you'll before you know it, you've paid fifty dollars for them to tell you to eat soup for a week. <laughs> you know, because <laughs> I did, I I did download just purely from uh, it was all about this. You watched this program, this uh, video for about twenty five minutes, and they told you all this information, and they sounded so knowledgeable. Um, and it was all around hormones and da 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 da. And I did. I, I I said to Rob, I said I just need to know what they're going to say. And and they gave you a meal plan for two weeks, and it was literally just the 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 benefits of it were that you beat in about five hundred calories a day. And it's like, well, of course that's going to work, but I could do that. <laughs> I don't need to pay fifty dollars to be told to not eat. So so did it go something along the lines of? Hi Joe, do your hormones feel out of whack? Yes. You're getting a bit soft around the edges. Yes. Do you feel that you haven't got the energy that you once had? Yes. Do you feel like you don't want to exercise because you don't have time? It, yes. it's, it's literally li oh. listing out the symptoms. You're going, ooh, ooh. It that, is. Ooh. Yeah. Well, that's it. But but that's how people get 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 pulled in, and and we all do, and we do have to do that. But you have to have something solid at the end to be able to and mm. sensible at the end to deliver i think otherwise it is it's just rude marketing because it is addressing people's pain points and we all have these pain points you know um and quite a lot of them are the same you know i've got a new uh, a new workshop series coming out in starting thank goodness after all this time in yeah. um starts in october um booking will open uh, at the end of uh, end of august but it's it's looking at um all the different interconnections from nutrition Mm -hmm. so it's called nutrition the mind body connection so we're going to be looking at nutrition for sleep nutrition for um uh healthy mind nutrition for exercise nutrition for um the gut healthy gut yeah. and then 
the last one is nutrition for life, which is basically going to all these all the nutrition, you know, like the science behind the nutrition and the, the biological chemical pathways and everything for all those other four are interconnected. Mm -hmm. So you can't you can't get one right. You know, if you get one one out of whack, it has a domino effect on all the others effectively. Um, so the last one is kind of just bringing it all together and um, connecting all the dots from a, a scientific, biological, chemical um, uh, perspective. Mm -hmm. And so how do we nourish ourselves with the right nutrition um, without it becoming complicated? You know, unless you've got a major issue that, that needs to be addressed, you have to look at the bigger picture. You have to look at nourishing your gut uh, at the same time that will nourish your mind, um, at the same time that will help you sleep, at the same time that will then help you exercise. They are all interconnected. So that's, you know, that's where we're kind of just, just want to give people the truth, really, um, and, and, and de you know, demystify it all and just teach people how to eat healthily on a daily basis so that the, the goals that they're trying to achieve of health which will in, then in turn um, if weight weight is is the issue which I think for a lot of people is where it starts you know that your body will find its own equilibrium which will manage its own weight it may not be the weight that you want to see in the mirror but you also have to accept sometimes that that's not how your body best works mm. you know at, at, you know eight stone when you're six foot four or whatever um it, it's out. that that's not how your body is built um mm. so it's just you know just trying to get people to give give people the you know the, the information to be able to to then build their own uh healthy eating Program. choices awesome. well just just make the right choices to, to, yeah. to feel confident and make the right choices on a long-term mm. basis so do, and that sounds like an amazing program and i Obviously, I know you've um, you've run it for you know a few times now. You've got some amazing results. Do you think people are just scared of making the right choices, or is it a combination of things? I think it's a combination of things. I think over it it takes time, and people are not very good at sustaining things for time. Um, you know, habit change takes time. Uh, and and people want instant results um, and it's not that that's not the way I work we're talking about getting healthy for life yeah. you know we're not crash dieting for a bikini um, and and I think I think people struggle with that and and the, the enormity they feel of the changes that they will have to make yeah it, it is too big and it's getting people and they want to do it all now it's getting people to understand that you don't have to do it all now. Mm -hmm. You have to look at where you start from. That's the other thing about, you know, getting on other people's plans is they don't know where you start from. I mean, if, if somebody, if I went on a, a plan of someone who's never looked at healthy eating before, it, it, it's, you know, that's, no, that's something else. Sorry, it's just a little side thing there yeah. is that you've got to look at where you're starting from. You know, where can you make the biggest wins by just changing one thing that might be just drinking more water every day yeah. mm. get that sorted don't and try and don't try and do 15 things today or this week and it's so funny i did a podcast about this just the other day just talking about we need to stop trying to do everything at once yeah and like you just said if someone drank up their water by a liter a day that would have an amazing impact on everything else. But I guess people are looking for the one thing that will drive the scale down. Is that yeah. where the problem but comes? There isn't one thing that will do that. There isn't one thing that will do that. And, and you know, there is no magic pill. There never will be a magic pill. We've got to be, we've got to be honest about that. So, you know, start with water change what you eat for breakfast to, to a high protein breakfast instead of a high sugar breakfast. Yep. You know, and maybe even, you know, some people fast, I know you were fasting in the past and maybe fasting really doesn't work for you because people try these things. Like, oh, 16, eight. I've saw yeah. me do that. But like you said a couple of times now, it's about you as an individual, right? 
and 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 being able to tweak that 16.8 was working for me for a for a long while mm. but I think now it certainly it's it's not working for me anymore it, I'm not gaining the benefits I think my metabolism was probably a little bit sleepy because of it having done it for such a long time mm. so it's it's and that's okay it, it, it's knowing that that's okay that was working then but our bodies change our lifestyle changes you know our environment changes we have to look at those things as well and and be able to tweak and change and listen to our own bodies yeah. and be honest you know that mm. what's working for the lady next door might not work for you um, and what you've been doing has been working before may not be working now and like you, you know you could have if your twin sister had decided to message me at the same time <laughs> but had mentioned that she doesn't train doesn't sleep well then the, the, even though you're genetically identical, your lifestyle is different. So the approach in nutrition or the strategy is going to be so different. Yeah, yeah, very much so. And and I think that's where people um, find it difficult is because um, they want it to be easy. They want the magic pill. They want to know that within three weeks that changes will have, have, have happened and, mm. um, and they'll have cracked it. But it's it's not... It isn't that simple. I know people want to think that it's that simple. Mm. It it is simple, but it just takes time, and you can't rush it if you want it to last forever. Yeah, I think. Oh, so many. Do you know what? Right, we could talk about this stuff like. I know. <laughs> like the time just goes so fast when we start talking. It's like, oh, it's yeah, ten minutes, and it's thing you go. <laughs> It um, makes me laugh because I was thinking beforehand, you know, oh, what are we going to talk about? Maybe I need to, to write some questions and, you know, da, 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 da. and then I thought, nah, it's Greg. We could talk about these things <laughs> for hours. I did, I did write some notes. Oh, my God. Look at. People. I turn it into a blog. Yeah, there you go. There you go. People who are what who are, don't watch this on YouTube again. Joe's just produced these amazing notes. I'm, I'm like so impressed and love the organization. Yeah, I just have to get my my uh, my head straight before I come on, and you know, just get my thoughts straight. I think it is. Um, and uh, have you looked at it once during this whole conversation? No, not once. <laughs> I never do. I never do. But it, as I say, I, it's the beginning of a good blog. Oh yeah, perfect, perfect. You can, you, <laughs> hey, feel free to use this conversation in your blog as well. Um, I was going to ask you a question as well. Oh, yeah. So something you mentioned earlier, way back in the conversation. So my, so my mind's a nightmare. I just jump around. You're eating more carbs. Like, yeah. surely that's not allowed. Like, that can't happen. <laughs> well, it's interesting, actually, because, as I say, I, I've, I've done keto. I've done paleo. I, I've done all sorts of things, um, you know, over the last 15 years. Um, and just have always gone traditionally low carb. And when I say that, you know, I... It, it is I've always stood I, I don't eat pasta I don't eat rice mm -hmm. um although today I will be you'll be very proud of me today I am testing a recipe of uh, a veggery so a vegan uh, or vegetarian it will be not vegan because I might put an egg on the top uh kedgeri, um which will be made with brown rice and split nice. peas. um so you, yeah I'll, you'll like that um yeah so but I'm actually enjoying eating the carbs now, um, but I, I still don't eat those carbs. You know, yeah. it is more sort of um, beans, lentils, uh, quinoa, sweet potato. Those are those are my, you know, and I, I call those the big carbs. But then I also have, you know, my, my vegetables, um, yeah. you know. Fruit maybe sometimes as well, of course. Yeah, I, I, I do, I eat more, I do, I do, I like my berries. Yeah, berries. awesome. Yeah, I mean, I would, I don't necessarily count those in my my big carbs. They're mm. my smaller carbs. <laughs> so yeah, I do. You know, so that's where I would get. But it's you know, you have to eat a lot of raspberries and apple yeah. to get up the up to the. You know, I still I I traditionally wouldn't have eaten bananas either. Okay. Um, but but they're they're featuring a bit more as well. Um, but you train you train CrossFit style, right? So you have to have the energy to do that work. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and underfuel under themselves because I can't have carbs. Mm. That was me. That was me. I, I have traditionally that has been my mentality. Mm. Um, 
and, and that's just a hangover from the very beginning when I had a lot of weight to lose. Yeah, got it. You know, um, and it is funny how you, you know, I, I don't have weight to lose particularly now. It's 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 just you know toning and it's tweaking. It's but but when I had a lot of weight to lose, it was the carbs that I cut out first. <laughs> no, no, hey, hey, and like you said though, different stages of life yeah. require a different strategy. So, Absolutely, yeah, yeah, very much so. All very right, much so. I just want to just lean into your expertise. Ooh. Um, so you're running your program in October, I believe. And yeah, so they're in individual workshops um, this time. Um, very science, well, not very science, but but nutritionally based about. Um, you know what the nutrients are that you need to to support different uh you know sleep gut health um exercise fueling for exercise so learning from what i've learned from you and other research i've done um and uh and for your mental health um and and then you know providing recipes and demonstrating recipes um that include those nutrients that will support those uh, those pathways um for better health really um so that starts uh in october and will run actually the five workshops over time right through till spring next year awesome um, sounds amazing oh. yeah it's gonna be good it's gonna be good to get back in the kitchen and get some new recipes going um and if you keep an eye on my instagram you'll see some of the recipes that are going to be up in those workshops i'm testing them at the moment and the veggery that i was just talking about is one of them that will be going into the uh into the exercise eat for exercise fueling your body um nice. One. right nice nice so i'm gonna because we could like i said we could be here all day and, <laughs> you know but i guess the big one is now you've run these workshops you'll be doing this you know you've been mm. helping people with their nutrition for a long time just leave people with your big three tips that they can take away and go right I can implement that because Joe says it what can people take away from um to become healthier you know that it that's my thing um it is to make sure that you are taking in a nutrient dense diet and so to to do that you have to have a wide variety of nutrients which will come from fruits, vegetables, majoritively plant-based um, uh, foods in every color of the rainbow. That is the way that you will get the nutrients into your body that you need. You know, we all know that we need to eat carbs and protein and fats, but make sure that majority of your plate is filled with colorful vegetables. That is my one top tip. Oh, you, want, you want three? No, I want three. Oh, you want three. Um, okay, so that's my first one. <laughs> that's my first one. The second one is to um, processed food, cut that as low as you possibly can. You know, ultra processed foods that they've been talking about quite a lot in the press at the moment. Try and, you know, really keep those to absolute minimum. Mm -hmm. um, and and other processed foods. I mean, they 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 say that some things are processed that we wouldn't even think are processed, like I don't know, even milk and things like that. Yeah. But I don't. <laughs> you know, it's just it's sort of things like yogurts and things like that. It's like processed foods. So keeping them down, particularly the ones that have added sugar. So learn to read the labels. Become a bit of a label fiend. Yeah. Have a look at the labels see what they, what's going into those foods. If you're buying foods that have got a label on, have a look at what they say. You know, for example, you're just talking about milk. Um, I drink soya milk sometimes, but I'm very particular about what soya milk I drink. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, Morrison's organic soya milk is fabulous. It has soya and water. That's yeah. what we do. If you buy another very popular brand, like beginning with an a l p r o Al alpro yes. yes um if you read the ingredients of their or uh, their soya milk mm -hmm. it's got quite a lot of other stuff in it doesn't need to be there you know it's, it's things like that so just be you know just be a little bit more take a little bit more interest in what's what's going into your basket and what's what's in the products that you buy 
Awesome. Uh, so that's the second one. And my third one really is, is that water. I will always come back to that water, drink more water, um, you know, make sure you are taking and hydrating yourself well, because it will keep your digestive system working properly. It will help you, um, your brain work properly. And, you know, and the, the knock on effects of all of those things will help your sleep, will help your energy levels, you know, all of those things um, work better if you're hydrated properly. Awesome. There's Those are my three top tips. <laughs> no, that's perfect. I know I know. if, if I let you carry on, we'll be like, yeah, tip number 51. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so where can the listeners come and find you, listen to you, stalk you, all of that kind of stuff? Where can they find you? Yeah, um, they can find me. Um, I am Time to Nourish on Instagram. Yep. Um, and uh, Facebook page uh, is the same. Uh, I have a Facebook group, a free Facebook group called the Time to Nourish Tribe. Um, and actually, we're talking about sleep this week. Um, so if you want to come in and, and have a little look at uh, we're talking and lots of people are talking about the problems that they're having with sleep. And we, we actually came to the conclusion yesterday that um, actually we'd all sleep a bit, sleep a lot better if we didn't have children. We didn't have uh, pets. Uh, we didn't have husbands or partners, um, and we didn't have the menopause. <laughs> it was obviously the going to bed early that created the children. Yes. So you've got to take some responsibility, ladies. I know, we have to take responsibility. <laughs> uh, but, th but there are things that you can eat that might of help, uh, help you sleep. Um, so yeah, those are the places. Instagram, Facebook, um, Time to Nourish. Awesome, and I will make sure I get the, the links in the show notes as yeah. well. Um, oh, that was fab. Thank you. Yeah, got so good to talk. Um, mm. I'm glad I could help you with your nutrition stuff. And I was just going to say that. And thank you for setting me on the right path because I knew that I needed uh, I needed a little bit of tweaking and that you would have the expertise to tweak me in the right direction to, to achieve what I was wanting to achieve. And I'm getting back to it now. Now the holidays are over. We're getting back to some normality and, uh, yeah, back to intuitive eating. Well, the, then the big question becomes... Do you, did you feel good in your bikini on your holiday? I did. I absolutely did. Felt great. Which, you know, makes the holiday better, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just let it all hang out. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you for coming on. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be another one at some point. You know, we'll, we'll obviously stay in touch. But um, I've been loving your recipes, by the way, on Instagram. Oh, thank you. Right. Oh, man. Can she just come and cook for me? Um, yeah. But uh, thank you very much for coming on and... Yeah, listeners, if you're listening to this and you enjoyed it, go follow Joe, um, but also leave a review on this podcast so more people can hear about it. And we'll talk to you soon. Yeah. Thanks, Greg. Thank you. Bye for now. Bye bye.